Hey everyone, it's Rob. Today we're going to be looking at a Sony BVM. And if you've purposely sought out this video, you know what that is. If you didn't, and you ended up here either through one of my other videos or who knows where, maybe by accident, you're probably wondering what the heck it is. So what we're looking at here is the back of a Sony broadcast video monitor. They also make something called a PVM, which some of you may have heard of, but probably not. A PVM is a professional video monitor. Both are Sony's very high-end video equipment made for production companies, uh, broadcast companies, you know, like TV studios, things like that, uh, folks that make commercials, <clears throat> etc. So uh, these are from another era. Um, I say these because I actually have a couple of different ones. You can see one over there. Uh, these are from either the <clears throat> 90s or early 2000s when 4x3 was still the preferred format for video. And uh, now everybody, everybody has pretty much switched to 16x9 widescreen. So these are all archaic, uh, outdated. And um, I think most folks were pretty happy to get rid of them because they're big, bulky, heavy, and they were super expensive. This particular model, I know we're just staring at the back of something right now, but <clears throat> this particular model, I looked up the MSRP. I was actually looking for, uh, see if I could find the weight of this thing, because it's super, super heavy. Uh, I actually brought out a, um, a scale and weighed it myself, and it, it's it's about 100 pounds, which for the size of it, which is probably about a two by two foot cube, it's super heavy. But anyway, I was looking for a weight. Maybe somebody was selling one and it would have a ship weight. What I found was the MSRP for this thing originally was about $9,500. Yeah, $9,500. It's a, <clears throat> what essentially amounts to a 19, 20 inch, you know, in that range, CRT. Just a, just a regular, you know, tube television type of thing. Uh, it doesn't even have any audio. So this is a true monitor. It doesn't have any audio capabilities whatsoever, just as video. And if you're looking at the back, you've probably noticed these strange looking connections here. And you're thinking, you know, where are the standard connections? So let me go over a few things. The reason I started out the video from the back is because it's probably the more interesting part of the, the two. You've seen what a CRT TV looks like, um, but this is sort of odd. <clears throat> so first of all, let's take a look at the model number here. I don't think it matters that you see the serial number. It's not like this thing is under warranty or anything. Um, but you'll see it's a Sony BVM 1911. 1911, um, the 19, the first two parts of BVMs and PVMs is usually the, uh, the uh, width of the, or the, the size of the monitor. So this is a 19, it's the 19, 20 inch class. They're very difficult to tell the difference between 19 and 20 inch. But uh, I suppose this is an actual 19 inch, not a 20 inch if we're going to be technical. Um, and then we see the inputs here. And these are all... You can't really tell, but they're they're, they're almost like daughter cards or add-ons. Uh, you can customize the slots to whatever it is that you need the BVM for. <clears throat> this particular one has inputs uh, for A and B, which are standard, just kind of composite input, which is, I know they don't look like it. These are all BNC connectors, by the way. Um, but, and if you don't know BNC, this is a terminator. Sometimes you need terminators. Uh, I don't think you do for what I need it for, but uh, this basically ends the connection, so... Um, if you did any old networking in the 90s, you may remember Terminators from BMC Networks. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, thank goodness that's gone, right? But anyway, uh, these connectors are uh, standard for video, you know, old video equipment. They have, let me look at this Terminator, they have locking mechanisms. So you can put it in and lock it in place. And uh, that way it keeps your video cables from coming loose. So... But ultimately, you can put a BNC to RCA adapter and just put regular RCA um, composite video into that. So these are just single input, just, you know, if you have like a yellow white mono uh, video slash audio cable for your old equipment, <clears throat> like your VCR or something like that, uh, that's what this would go into. You just put a BNC to RCA adapter and you could stick it in there. So it's got two of those. Let me see if I can make this a little sharper. It's got the video A and video B, so you can put two of those sources. Um, and then the bottom, you have something that says external sync, which actually goes with this board right here. Uh, this is the one that I actually care about. This is the RGB input. So RGB stands for red, green, blue, and it's the purest form of analog video that you can um, input into a monitor. Um, when something outputs an RGB, 
it doesn't process it at all. It just outputs the red, green, and blue signals. And the monitor itself just receives, uh, everything's clean and it, it, it gives you the best uh, possible input. It, it beats components. Um, and again, this is analog only, you know, HDMI and DVI, all that stuff, uh, display port, that's all modern technology. But back in the day for analog input, this was the highest end possible. Um, the reason we have an external sync is because some RGB, in fact, almost everything that relates to video games, which is why I'm doing this, um, which is why I bought this in the first place and why I'm making this video, because most people watching this are probably retro video game enthusiasts. Um, <clears throat> what they work on is they output the red, green, blue, and then a sync signal. So the sync signal, if you don't hook up the sync, uh, essentially have what an old television looks like, vertical hold that doesn't isn't quite right. It's just, you can see the image, but it's just not right. So it's not synced up. So once you hooked up the external sync, and there's a whole other thing about clean sync and all this, I'm not even gonna talk about that. Just know that it, it needs a sync for most video games, it needs a sync signal along with the red, green, and blue to produce the image that you want. Uh, this board right here is an output board. So you can actually daisy chain uh, you can put RGB in here and RGB out here. And there's this bottom one here, I, I presume it's got a terminator in it, but this is probably the external sync output so that you can output to another um, monitor. So if you wanted to do like a, for instance, a head-to-head -head fighting game, if you wanted a head-to-head -head fighting game with two of these monitors, uh, you, could, you could do that. And because they're CRT, it would pretty much be lagless. So anyway, that's, that's what that's for. This here is a remote port where you could put um, as it says, a remote to control the various things that you can control in this thing. And what you can control is actually pretty crazy. Um, and then on here, it's just the power, it's standard power, like we'd see on a PC, um, power supply, and then the voltage, you can see it goes between 100 and 220 for European. Uh, one thing you might notice is there's a set of keys here and they're not, um, I mean, they are for security as pretty much all keys are, but they're not for security for theft. Let me show you what these are. I'm going to turn this around slowly. It's actually sitting on a uh, a stool that I use, a rotating stool for I use for fighting games for my cabinets. So this thing is very heavy. So if it falls, it's bad news. Um, here you'll see the controls uh, up front, and you already see there's a bevy of of knobs and buttons and whatnot. And um, so let me just go through a couple of these. Uh, so apparently there's something you can hook up here that does some kind of setup. I'm not sure what that is. It's some probe. Perhaps it's got light sensors or whatever to adjust the picture, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm just making guesses. Uh, the Degas, uh, if you've ever turned on a monitor, especially an old PC CRT monitor, it makes that buzz, buzzing noise when you turn it on. It's actually degaussing or demagnetizing the surface. Um, you can see, <laughs> I can see a laundry basket. It doesn't actually have laundry. Let me just quickly show you. It actually has an RGB um, cable or RGB um, capable is what I meant to say RGB cable Genesis that I took I actually put this in a laundry basket to make it easy to transport because I took this laundry basket with this RGB Genesis over to the person's house that was selling these monitors so that I could test RGB capabilities of these machines so anyway that's yeah that's not my dirty laundry there um, <clears throat> going back to the control panel on the BVM you see there's different kind of scan modes. I did try these when I tried the RGB uh, at the guy's house before I bought it. All it seemed to do is what those little icons seem to say, just squish the pictures one way or the other or just made it normal. Um, I don't really know. So RGB again, I think you can just test the individual colors if you just want the green to come through, the blue, or maybe it's excluding, I'm not really sure. But anyway, these for sure um, correspond to the RGB inputs. Then we have some aperture, blue only. I don't know why. I've seen blue only mode in a couple of these PVMs. I guess it has something to do with video editing. And mono mode, I don't even know because it doesn't have sound. So it's not uh, relating to mono or stereo sound. Um, we have some knobs here for different adjustment of the picture. Chroma, brightness, contrast, and phase. I don't even know what that does. And then each of them is apparently can be activated or deactivated. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things you can tune. I don't know what overload is, but I presume you don't want that to happen. So hopefully that never lights up. Uh, and these inputs, I don't even know. Oh, this must be the AV input. Okay, so there's input one or input two in the back. I don't know why there's four of them. There's just way too many buttons. And this one's the only one I know for sure what it does, and that's turning on and off. So you may have noticed in the middle here, there's a key or a whole keyhole for this key here. 
and you're thinking, what is this for? Which is what I was thinking when I saw it. When the guy showed, he, when the guy was showing it to me, he was like, and I have the keys for it too. I'm like, what do you mean the keys for it? It's not like a car. I can't even get in there. And he's like, yeah, you need the keys for the front panel. I'm like, what are you talking about? I've owned PVMs before. Uh oh. And he's not. I know it works because he opened it. Oh, there it is. It does work. Oh, there it is. Okay, just thing all the way through. Let's look at this craziness. This whole other control panel for this thing. And the reason we had to open it, and look, it's got, I don't even know what this stuff does. I, I, I literally just looked at it one time. Um, and the reason that I had to look at it was because uh, initially we were getting a problem with sync and there's no sync button up here to enable external sync. I know there are some PVMs, um, but you'll see it's right here. So I had to um, push the sync button to get it to go to external sync so that it would take the sync from the cable that I connected to it, and that's what fixed it. But yeah, there are a crazy amount of things that you can do here. Um, I don't even know. I, I, honestly, the picture was good. I'm probably not going to mess with it, but it looks like you can mess with a lot of stuff. Um, the geometry was good on it, meaning, you know, the picture wasn't distorted, uh, you know, th there was no, like, pincushion problems or anything like that. So I just, I'm just going to leave this alone. It's pretty cool that all the stuff's here, um, but yeah, it's a little bit more than we probably need to mess with as retro gamers. So, unless you need to turn on the external sync, which you will need to if you're using, um, like, a Genesis or a Super Nintendo or anything like that. So, anyway, that's that. I, uh, so the front, you kind of see me here wearing my Evo um, sweatshirt. Uh, nothing really different about it. It looks, I mean, you'll see some markings and stuff, but uh, these are all on the screen. It's not a big deal. Uh, you'll see this is BVM 1911. It comes from the factory that way, actually. So I've seen other ones that have the same thing. So um, that's kind of a strange way to put the uh, model. But anyway, that's there. And it's a little dirty. I mean, these things are really old. I, I didn't see a date on this, but... It looks to be probably early 2000s, um, but let me hook it up and then I'm going to show you uh, some RGB games. So I'm going to put this on pause now and we'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back. I have uh, hooked up a Neo Geo to the RGB inputs on this uh, PVM or BVM 1911. And uh, here's the BNC cables. Here's what they look like. They're if you've used BNC before, they're pretty standard just lock into place and we got the red green and blue and then the sync cable here you'll notice these terminators are here but they're really unnecessary they're just there from whenever I bought the BBM and I just haven't <laughs> they didn't do anything so I just left them there uh, so this cable itself is from a company in the UK who sells a lot of very niche RGB related gaming cables and let's see if I can get the URL there. It's retrogamingcables.co.uk. Um, if you go there, you can see a whole bunch of really niche things, uh, just all kinds of RGB cables for all kinds of systems. Uh, they sell this PVM um, cable. It's really just SCART to PVM and um, a whole bunch of other things. The only thing is they're in the UK, so if you're like me and you're in the United States, it takes a bit to get here. Uh, the shipping isn't too bad. If you go to the website, there's a there's an option to change everything from, from British pounds into US currency, so you can see what they cost in US dollars. Uh, it's a little bit more to ship here. You can actually get these cables from eBay if you just search for Euroscart RGB PVM, you, you should find quite a bit they run from uh, 35 40 dollars I guess for the US ones I think the the European one is 28 dollars but once you add the shipping it ends up being about the same so these are a little bit higher quality than the ones you find on, on uh, eBay not a lot higher quality the other ones work perfectly fine I have it on another PVM and they work fine and they take a little bit longer to get here but it's up to you so notice that uh, the audio is broken out into just regular RCA connections for the left and right. So I have that into a coupler because I don't have, it's hard to find 
uh, female RCA stereo to female um, 3.5 millimeter. So I ended up just getting a coupler, but then this goes to the speaker set. Oh, is that plugged in all the way? There it is. No, it is. So um, then that just goes to there's a small subwoofer underneath the table and a couple of these little satellite speakers. And yeah, this thing costs like $35, $40. Um, that's all you really need because, again, this does not have audio. Looks wonderful. I'll show you in just a second, but no audio on this thing. Uh, and I noticed, I was like, why are there heat sinks on a CRT? But they actually get a little warm. I mean, I can still touch them, but they're noticeably warm. So that's sort of interesting. Um, and if you can see inside, you can't really see inside. It is chock full, I mean, to the top with electronics. Um, I really don't know what goes into making one of these, but... I weighed it. It was about 100 pounds, and there's no joke. I mean, it's this thing's no joke. It's got a bunch of shit in there. I don't know what's in there. But anyway, um, yeah, that's what it looks like from the back. If you have any questions about the cables, just uh, put a comment, and I'll let you know. There's a really good site called Retro RGB, I think, and it goes over all the different consoles and all the different ways to get RGB out of the different consoles, the different models, etc., etc. But anyway, let me pause this and come around to the front. Okay, I'm unsure how this video is going to come out because I'm just recording this with my iPhone. I don't know if the video is going to be flickering or not, but I assure you that it looks wonderful uh, live. There's no flicker. Um, it just looks really, really sharp. The colors really, really pop. It looks fantastic. It's by far the best uh, BVM slash PVM I've owned. Um, I have another one over here that's running Super Nintendo Street Fighter 2 Turbo. And that's on a, a modded uh, RGB booster, or R, it has an RGB booster, or uh, not really to explain it. The Super Nintendo does RGB by default, but the Super Nintendo Junior, or Mini, or whatever you want to call it too, um, does RGB better if you put the RGB booster into it. So it's like a $30 chip, it's pretty easy to solder. Um, and it looks really, really good. This is a uh, Olympus OEV two, uh, 23, yeah, no, 203, yeah, it's an OEV 203, it's up in the corner, actually. Um, it's got a Trinitron monitor. It's really just a Sony that's been re-badged uh, as a different company. The Olympus brand sold to medical uh, companies, hospitals, stuff like that, doctor's offices, so, uh, they just basically bought a whole bunch of stuff from Sony, rebranded it Olympus, but it's really a Sony monitor. Uh, it's Sony through and through, it's got Sony guts, everything's the same except for the badge. So if you can find an Olympus uh, OEV203, I recommend it. They got two RGB inputs and uh, it looks really good. It doesn't look quite as good. I mean, once you're getting into high-end stuff like this, you're splitting hairs. Uh, it, it, I mean, you're going, it's, it's diminishing returns. The more you spend, um, it's, it really is. You start to notice, I mean, you really have to pull out the microscope. Uh, it's like when you go from composite to S-video, there's a huge jump. Then you go to S-video to uh, component, and there's a, a jump, but it doesn't seem quite as big. And then from component to RGB, probably even less, to be very honest. But, you know, <clears throat> if you're going for the best, you might as well just go for the best. And uh, same thing with the PVMs and BVMs. The BVMs... Uh, are supposed to be the higher quality one, but honestly, the, the PVMs are, are just as good. Uh, again, you're splitting hairs. So anyway, uh, let me show you on the inside. Oops, I was already unlocked. What I have to do, this thing kind of came alive. Uh, when I first turned it on, I had mentioned this before, that sync button uh, was um, showing an internal sync. Now it's external, you just, it, this is what happens if it's not synced properly. That's what happens if you don't hook up the cable or if it's not synced properly. So you gotta put the sync back on. And what was happening is I was turning it off. You sure have the audio because it's separate. And then when I turn it back on, you know, let me change the input. Okay, so that's, that's the wrong input. If I put on four, 
which is input I've saved. It takes a little while to warm up, just a few seconds, but you'll see it, it synced. What was happening is um, it would lose the, the, the setting. So you have to um, go into this menu here, hit the menu, it brings up a menu, and uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of settings, but if you uh, save the, the, the setting, it will keep it for that input, but I'm just gonna hit escape to exit out. But uh, I'm not gonna mess with pretty much any of these. These little uh, adjustment, they look like little pots, so you can see kind of a Phillips head on top of those, and you can adjust the uh, you know the, the vertical and width for the different settings for 16 by nine, under scan, and normal. Um, I'm not gonna touch those, because honestly, the geometry looks really good. But if you needed to do that, uh, you could. And there's just a bunch of crazy stuff in here. Like, I have no idea what AFC is or why I would want to change from 0.5 milliseconds to two to seven. Um, but you could, if you wanted to. And again, there's just, just tons of crazy stuff. Um, luckily, I bought this from a guy who was a professional video producer. He worked on commercials, and this thing was pretty much good to go. It was two out of the gate. So I didn't really have to do much. You can see. I hope you can see in this video. It just looks fantastic. I'm gonna see if I can start a game so it doesn't. I'll just let the computer beat me up. Uh, no, let's go for the beginning. So if you look at the details, you can still see scan lines on this, which is good because you really wanna see scan lines when you play these old games because the artwork was designed with scan lines in mind. Um, so when you, that's what, if you've ever seen an NES or Super Nintendo, any of these old 8 or 16-bit systems on an LCD, um, usually the upscaler handles it very poorly, and there's some lag, so it has to, it has to take that 240p signal and upscale it to, to 1080p or 720p, and it, it just takes time, it looks like garbage. Um, the other thing it does is it doesn't use scan lines, so you have these really, I mean, they're blocky. I mean, clearly you can see blockiness all around. You know, it's not like it's anti-alias or anything like that. But the blockiness really works. It is how the art was designed. When they when they drew this stuff, they expected that. So um, it looks really weird when it's not there. So you do see the scan lines, although this thing has 900 lines of resolution, uh, which is about twice what a normal TV would have. Um, if it could do 480p. So it is uh, really sharp, but yet still retains the scan lines. And most importantly, the colors are just superb. They're, they're really, really good. So let me pick a character so I can get off the screen. I like Hotaru. I love this game. The animation is fantastic. So what I'm using here, kind of as a side note, I'm using an um, analog, interactive, um, this out of my CMBS, which is a consoleized uh, Neo Geo arcade uh, board, and it's running through RGB through one of their cables, and it's modded. It's actually, it's actually just a, an arcade board, a single slot arcade board, but in a wood case. So, and they come with, um, well, you buy these separately. They're, it's actually two hundred dollars per controller for these things. This is a, a wooden a Neo Geo stick. This is a Seimitsu LS40 stick, which is what is standard in Japan for Neo Geo. I know I'm getting off topic, but it's my video and I don't care. Um, and then these buttons I've replaced, they came with Seimitsu buttons, but I don't like Seimitsu buttons, so I replaced them with Samo buttons. And uh, they don't make black buttons for for this particular project I was working on, for, for screw-in. So, um, because this is wood, so they're screw-in, they're not, they're not snapping, um, I put black stoppers which I do make and then the Neo Geo colors there which I think actually came out pretty good and I changed the ball top to this cherry red so anyway if you're wondering when I'm playing that and that is the uh, multi cart I actually own Garo for the MVS it's just much easier to have a multi cart in there I actually have quite a few MVS carts but the multi cart works pretty well and you go, oh I'm dead and um, anyway that's how it uh, works Again, I'm not sure that you're able to see firsthand. I don't have a video capture card that captures RGB. Uh, for that, you probably need a frame meister that goes to HDMI, that goes to an Elgato or some kind of other capture device. And I just don't have <clears throat> that. I do have an Elgato, but I don't have a frame meister. 
and uh, anyway hopefully you can tell here it does look really gorgeous all right well thanks for watching the video um, if I was going to give this a rating, I would give it probably a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, the only reason I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 is because I know there's actually a higher BVM model. And so if I ever get one of those, <coughs> I have to have room to give it a better rating just in case. So, But it, it's, it's fantastic. I got it for a really good price. If you can find any BVMs, I would recommend you get it. Honestly, if you get any PVM, uh, you won't regret it, I don't think. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you.